Good evening and welcome to NTD UK News. I'm Stuart Leeson here, today's top stories. Cinemas are open with 50% capacity and film lovers are excited to see the big screen again. Indoor hospitality venues reopen, but footfall in retail shops fails to rise. And data shows the housing market in the UK is booming, with asking prices hitting a record high. Watching a movie at home is convenient, but the excitement of seeing a film on a big screen is back. Cinemas reopened this week with limited seats and COVID-19 measures in place. NTD's Neil Woodrow is at the movies. Watching the latest movie release with popcorn, hot dogs among a large group is back. Across England, Wales and parts of Scotland, indoor entertainment venues are welcoming audiences after several months of closure. Londoner Sam Pock was anticipating the thrill of the big screen as he waited on Monday to enter a cinema in Leicester Square. Yeah, I've missed it a lot. It's uh, just the whole experience of um, just going out, um, just sitting down in a big screen and yeah, just the whole feeling of being in a cinema is just something I've missed for the past year, so I can't wait to go inside and watch a film. Cinema has been missed. Oh, I just feel relieved, <laughs> relieved that we're getting back to normal culture again. Thoughts about the pandemic are on this gentleman's mind. I mean, I haven't had a vaccine yet, so I'm not super, super confident about myself, but it's been long enough. We've got the masks, we've got the sanitizer. I think people can start making their own decisions now. And I hope and I trust that, you know, a place like this will do everything they can to people, keep people safe. Tim Richards, founder and CEO of cinema chain View International, said the business was seeing bookings at levels slightly above a normal pre-COVID market. He said it's very exciting. We have this situation now where we're going to be having almost three years of movies in the next 12 to 18 months. So we're looking at this extraordinary period where I genuinely believe we're going to be looking at the second golden age of cinema. Cinemas are counting on highly anticipated films like the latest James Bond, No Time to Die and Marvel's Black Widow to entice audiences. Both were pushed back from 2020. Last year cinemas were able to open for a few months and to be honest the, the lack of availability of big films meant that it was always a slightly half-hearted affair. This time I think absolutely there's an expectation that this is it and that cinema audiences will want to come back and enjoy the big screen with their friends and with their family. Film critic Kalim Aftab says it might be some time before the film studios feel confident with cinema-only releases. Yeah, I don't think we're going to be completely there until after the summer. I think when we're looking beyond and we see films like the James Bond that's scheduled to come out in uh, end of September, early October, that's when we're really going to see the billion dollar movies back. Seats are still available for the latest releases. So if you're going to the cinema, enjoy the movie. Neil Woodrow, NTD News, Leicester Square, London. Despite the relaxation of rules for hospitality this week, many people haven't been persuaded back into shops. Footfall counts from during the day on Monday show a reduction in the number of shoppers compared to the same time last week. Here's NTD's Jane Well with the story. We've regained freedoms with restrictions easing, but recent data suggests that many people haven't returned to shopping. Footfall across retail destinations declined by 3% before 5pm on Monday, compared to the previous week. It did rise by 4% in the evening, though. Heavy rain showers could have put people off during the day, but it's still down by more than a third compared to this time in 2019. Retail parks had the biggest drop in numbers. Across much of the UK, pubs and restaurants have reopened, but central London hasn't seen a return of as many shoppers. Regional cities showed an increase in people out and about by Monday evening, up 22%. Overall, though, there are fewer people. However, there are signs that people will return. Analysts say more people have started to shop for groceries in person. 
Jane Werrell, NTD News, London. People in England are stepping out of lockdown, but the Indian variant is still looming. Some ministers say the next step to freedom may be under threat. Good morning. The NHS is offering the vaccine to 37-year-olds amidst fears that the spread of the Indian variant could jeopardize plans to ease restrictions. As the rollout moves down the age groups, on Wednesday the invitation will be sent to 36-year-olds. Over 50s are having their second jabs brought forward on the advice of the Joint Committee on Vaccination and Immunization. The move comes amidst continuing concern about the fast spreading of the Indian variant. There's now 2,323 confirmed cases of B1617.2 in the UK. 483 of these cases have been seen in Bolton and Blackburn with Darwin, where it's now the dominant strain. Cases there have doubled in the last week and are rising in all age groups. The authorities have responded by deploying surge vaccinations and testing in virus hotspots. Hancock warned the final lifting of lockdown restrictions in England may have to be delayed if the new variant continues to spread. We have set out four parameters for taking that step. Uh, the first three are currently in good shape. The challenge is the new variant, uh, but we will. it's far too early to be able to make, say anything about that specifically. Uh, we will have to see, we'll look at the data up to the 14th of June and, and, make, a, and make an announcement on that date. The Times reported that ministers are considering plans for local lockdowns if the strain cannot be brought under control. Prime Minister Boris Johnson has said he doesn't see a reason to change the planned lifting of restrictions, but he's keeping a close eye on the situation. I don't see uh, anything uh, conclusive at the moment to say that we need to deviate from the roadmap, but we, we've got to be cautious and we're keeping uh, everything under very close observation. We'll, we'll know a lot more in a few days' time. The next and final stage of lockdown lifting is set for June the 21st. And in other news, the pensions regulator is working closely with ride-hailing company Uber. That's following the Supreme Court's ruling that drivers are workers and not self-employed. And Denise Patrick Hayden takes a look. The pensions regulator says gig economy companies should consider giving pensions to their workers. That's after the Supreme Court ruled Uber should give pensions, sick pay and holiday pay to their workers. The pensions watchdog is currently working closely with Uber. Pensions regulator Chief Executive Charles Council says other gig economy companies should do the same or risk intervention. But former pensions minister Sir Steve Webb told The Telegraph the regulator does not have the powers to make firms provide freelancer pensions. He says there needs to be a rule. It is fine the regulator urging businesses to do good things, and I hope they will, but Uber had to be taken to court. He says it's unlikely that companies will offer pensions out of the goodness of their heart and legislation needs to catch up. Patrick Hayden, NTD News London. Excavation work is to begin at a cafe in Gloucestershire. Police suspect serial killer Fred West buried a teenage girl there. West was a regular at the cafe where Mary Bastholm worked as a waitress. A photo taken by a production company appears to show some blue material buried in the cellar. Mary was wearing a blue coat when she went missing in January 1968. Along with his wife Rose, West tortured, raped and murdered an unknown number of women over a 20-year period. The notorious serial killer died in prison in 1995, aged 53. Forensic archaeologists say several other anomalies in the cellar warrant further exploration. And in other news, new data says the average house asking price reached a third of a million pounds this month, and demand is massively exceeding supply in the housing market. And Didi's Patrick Hayden has more on this story. New data says the average price tag on a British home is more than a third of a million pounds. 
Property website Rightmove says, so far this month, asking prices are just under £334,000. That's an average increase of about £5,800 from April. That's a 1.8% jump. We spoke to one property expert who says there is a chronic lack of supply and it's pushing prices up. Uh, people are reluctant to put their houses on the market unless they've got somewhere to move to. We have this, um, let's call it an urban exodus, where people are seeking to move out of more crowded areas, more rural areas where they perceive the quality of life will be better for them and their family. Hayward says the main house builders in the UK won't be rushing to meet the current level of demand either. We know already there are 1.1 million planning consents that have not yet been activated. So that it's not to say there isn't land there, there isn't land there with consent. It is there, um, but the house builder is for profit, so they won't want to flood the market with houses. He says with the stamp duty holiday ending in June, there will be an ease in supply and demand. Demand is currently massively exceeding supply, and that's even more so in the north. By contrast, asking prices in London are at a virtual standstill. But buyers, particularly international ones, are still being drawn to the capital. We are already seeing signs of foreign investment, particularly from places like Hong Kong, uh, where people are seeking to buy a permanent home over here rather than investment. Uh, and I think as the pound remains weak, uh, we'll still see overseas investors uh, seeking to purchase in London. Right Moves Director of Property Data says London prices are still on average 2.9 times higher than in the north, but that ratio is at its lowest since 2013. Hayward says the government is in favour of home ownership and going forward they will do all they can to promote it rather than the renting sector. Patrick Hayden, NTD News London. Official figures suggest the labour market is showing signs of recovery but still has some way to go to get back to pre-pandemic levels. Official data shows the number of UK payroll workers surged for the fifth month in a row in April. The data suggests Britain's economy is beginning to spring back to life thanks to lockdown easing. The Office for National Statistics says the number of payroll workers rose by 97,000 between March and April. Job vacancies also continue to increase as shops and outdoor dining reopened last month. Its labour market overview says the jobs market has been stable in recent months, with early signs of recovery. But the number of payroll employees remains 770,000 below pre-pandemic levels. Official figures show the overall unemployment rate fell to 4.8% from January to March, 0.3 percentage points lower than the previous quarter. This came despite the country being in lockdown in the first quarter of this year, when many unemployed were no longer looking for work. In the first quarter, the UK employment rate was estimated at 75%, over one percentage point lower than before the pandemic, but slightly higher than the previous quarter. The Office for National Statistics also says people aged 16 to 24 have been particularly affected by the pandemic. The Metropolitan Police say four men arrested on Sunday for shouting anti-Semitic abuse in London have been released on bail. The men were arrested after footage showed people in cars with Palestinian flags shouting violent threats against Jews. Police tracked down one of the cars and arrested four men on suspicion of racially aggravated public order offences. The conflict in the Middle East has triggered protests in the UK, raising concerns over a possible spike in anti-Semitic abuses. On Monday, two men were arrested after a rabbi was attacked near his synagogue in North London. Essex police said officers are engaging with local Jewish communities to provide reassurance. Still to come, Spain is dealing with a migration crisis after at least 6,000 Moroccans swam into its port city on the northern shore of Africa. Find out more after the break.